What's up, cruisers? We are back from our Caribbean Princess 10-night Panama Canal and Caribbean cruise and are so happy to be here to give you our trip report today. Today's episode is sponsored by CruiseLine.com, where you can find reviews, tips, and photos from real everyday cruisers like us. Speaking of which, I wanted to let you guys know that I actually already wrote my review. It's very short. Um, my review on ShipmateCruiseLine.com is there and several photos are also posted already, so be sure to check it out. Wanted to thank everybody so much for your patience over the last few weeks. I know that we really didn't miss a beat with our live streams, but it felt like an eternity in between and we're so happy to have everyone here. Special happy birthday to our friend Cheryl, who I know is watching today. Happy birthday, Cheryl, up in Canada. So glad that you could join us on your special day today. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, roll the chat. So what did you guys think about all the photos this morning on Instagram and Facebook of Princess Keys of the bungalow? Isn't it gorgeous? Did you love it? We had such a great day there. So what I'm doing is I'm going back and posting all of our, um, our trip photos in order. So we're, we started with our embarkation day, then it's Princess Keys, and then it's on to, I'm referring to my handy dandy itinerary. Then next up, <clears throat> our sea days. Cartagena, Colombia, Panama Canal, Limon, Costa Rica, more sea days in Grand Cayman. So we will go in that order and just kind of keep them coming for the next probably about a week and a half, but I'm gonna to try to get all of the photos posted in the next week and a half. So, wanted to let everybody know we're here until 12.45 today, so we're keeping this short. 12.45 is the cutoff because, as some of you might remember, our little son has his piano recital today at two, so we've got to disconnect, turn off our computers, get everybody dressed, have a quick lunch, and then drive him to his piano recital. He is playing Carol of the Bells, and it is amazing. So maybe we will, during the holiday season, have him play for you guys. I think we could probably figure out a way to photograph or film him doing it. It's really, really cute. So looking forward to that. Um, also wanted to let you know some exciting news. We were on the Cruise Dudes podcast, episode number 112, with a trip report of our... Um, Carnival Miracle Cruise back in May. We actually recorded the episode a few months ago. And so it might seem a little dated because you guys have already seen the videos, but it's a really fun, long interview on that cruise. And we do cover a lot of things that we didn't necessarily go into depth with on our vlogs or videos. So you might want to check that one out. And we have a special surprise for you guys in the month of December. We were missing Vlogtoberfest so much that we decided to do something special again. And no, it's unfortunately not a video every day. We wish we could do that. But with the holidays, it's a little too cray cray. But what we are doing is a live stream every single Saturday in the month of December. So December 9th, December 16th, December 23rd and 30th, we're going to be doing that. Next Saturday, the 9th, our live stream will be all about our carry-on packing adventure experience, hits and misses. This is a subscriber requested episode. Someone messaged me and said, hey, can you please tell us all about how it went? And we would absolutely love to. Most of you already know that our carry-on packing was a huge success. If you follow us on social media, it was so cool. Um, it was really liberating. It was easier for us because my husband could manage two out of the three bags by himself. We had no issues repeating our clothing. We, we did really, really well. Of course, we did make some mistakes and we will share all of those with you next Saturday. So we're really excited to do that. Um, we are still editing our Alaska videos. So you guys are gonna be seeing all of our Alaska videos, Victoria, British Columbia, all that good stuff come out before we get to editing our Caribbean princess videos. So we'll try to answer any questions that you guys might have. And within the next couple of weeks, I will have all of the patterns um, scanned and posted to our website for Caribbean princess so you guys can see everything. And if you have any questions today, I have the patterns here with me. I did wanna show you guys what the pattern looked like on Thanksgiving day. Normally they just look like this. So a normal kind of pretty photo at the top. But on Thanksgiving day, they did a really pretty one and they had this little Thanksgiving kind of heading on top. It was really cute. So if you, anybody has any questions about how Thanksgiving was on the ship, I'll try to address those today. I am going to give priority to questions about Caribbean Princess and the Panama Canal today if we can. But of course, as always, we will try to answer as many general questions as we possibly can, possibly you know, within the time that we have. So if I miss your question, just leave it in the comments when this is saved to replay. So let's talk a little bit about the ship and the renovations and the itinerary and the shore excursions and all that good stuff. And Mr. Cruise Tips TV, can you tell me if any questions come in about Caribbean Princess or the Panama Canal? And I'll hit him. Okay, sounds good. He's nodding. Yes, yes. Okay. So first I want to let you guys know that the renovations on Caribbean Princess are beautiful. 
very noticeable. Um, my favorite renovation, you guys probably will not be surprised about this, uh, is definitely the World Fresh Marketplace, which is formerly the Horizon Court. It has been beautifully transformed. Um, it's very well laid out. I wouldn't say that the food is all that different necessarily. I'm sure there's some differences, like they have the pancake bar in the morning with like five different kinds of pancakes. They have like almond pancakes, apple pancakes, and toppings you could put on them, special things like that. And they have the omelet bar now at the back of the ship in the in the planks and steamers location. So as you guys know, on some of these princess ships, they have sort of a giant, uh, they have the giant buffet area, but then they cordon off the, the back area for specialty restaurants. Well, on this ship, they have on each side, they have a specialty restaurant that serves dinner. On one side, it's planks. Planks is the barbecue spot. And steamers is the side that has the steamed mussels, clams, fish, things like that. But during the day, it is the normal buffet area. So breakfast and lunch, it's just extra seating for the buffet. Both sides, planks and steamers, decor is totally different. Over on the plank side, it's this very sort of dark mahogany, leather chairs, really sophisticated dark browns and reds look. And on the steamer side, it's just this beautiful sort of nautical tans, aquas, creams, different colors, totally different, but really beautiful. The light fixtures, if you've seen any of the photos from um, YouTube or the, you know, the other social medias that have been floating around out there from the folks who did the ship visit, a lot of people over in the UK did a ship visit recently, have beautiful photos posted. You can see that they did amazing things with the light fixtures in the buffet. And I just have to tell you guys that it is so stunningly beautiful and it really refreshes the ship and makes it look amazing. Um, my second favorite renovation, oh, you guys, it's the princess luxury beds. I just can't. I can't even imagine having a bed more comfortable than the one in my home, but you literally just melt into it and you fall asleep and you sleep like a baby. We slept so well on this cruise for the most part. And I just, it's hard to explain them because they're something, some kind of combination of soft and perfectly firm and the pillows are nice and the sheets are perfect and the down comforter is great. And it's just, it is just, a huge, huge perk. And I, I really will compare every other cruise to those princess luxury beds now. We loved our cabin. We were in a Carib deck balcony. We had a half exposed cabin, half exposed, half covered, which was awesome because we did get rain a few days, mostly at sea. Um, and so we could kind of still go out on the balcony, but be sheltered from the rain. And that was cool. The balcony was enormous enormous and the balconies on the Carib deck from what I understand do not cost more so tip for all of you who are planning cruises on the Caribbean princess I highly highly recommend that you um, book a balcony on the Carib deck if you can so I want to jump in and see if there's any questions and then what we'll do is we'll talk about dining and then we'll talk about ports shore excursions in the canal and all that good stuff so Mr. Cruise Tips TV cue me up any good um any questions coming in? I see Amanda's I can hit real quick. Amanda said, what port did you leave from? You were around trip Fort Lauderdale, Amanda. Okay, I'm ready for more. Caleb Sam. Caleb. Have you sailed Panama Canal before it was redone? And if so, do you like it more or less? Okay, Caleb, I love your question. It's so timely. Caleb wanted to know if we'd sailed Panama Canal before the new locks. And if so, do we know the difference? So no, Caleb, we'd never sailed the older locks. This was our first time. We did not sail the Gatun locks um, before this one. So we were in the Agua Clara locks, the new locks. I actually did expect that on this cruise, it was going to be sort of a degraded experience. Like, okay, I'm going to be lacking in history. You know, there's... Um, there's not as much excitement because the locks are wider and you're not going to feel like you're as close to the edges. So there's going to be this lack of drama and you don't have the mules pulling you over, you know, pulling the ship, but it was absolutely not the case. It was so incredible. You really don't lose anything at all by going through the new locks. They're still an engineering marvel. You're very close to the locks on the other side. I believe it's the Gatun locks that are just next to them. And it is absolutely spectacular. I am so glad that we didn't book a shore excursion on the day that we were in Panama Canal. The way that it works is when you go on the Caribbean Princess 10 night um, cruises that do not do a full passage, they only do the partial transit you only go through one set of locks, the Gatun or Agua Clara locks, whichever, depending on your ship size, those are the locks you're going to go through. Then you anchor in Gatun Lake and passengers have the choice to get off the ship and go do full day shore excursions or to stay on the ship and make the passage back through the locks again and pick up the passengers at another port, which is on the other side of the locks. So 
that port should either be Cristobal or Cologne, which are basically the same thing, and there's absolutely nothing in that port except for beautiful, gorgeous shipping um, containers, which we loved watching. But for us to be able to go through the locks twice, after having such, being so, not tired, but you know how you kind of, you have a lot going on on a cruise and some days you're really happy to just stay on the ship? This was even better than a sea day because we got to experience the locks twice and it's a very slow, long experience. So the first passage through the locks started at about 5.30 in the morning on our Panama day and was over, it took about one and a half to three hours to get through the three locks. It's an extremely slow process for the tugboats to pull you in. They inch you in to the locks. Then the water very, 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 very slowly raises. And then you see the gate open to the next lock and then you slowly get pulled into the next lock. And then you see your, you know, the water rises very, very slowly. So we're talking about hours here. Um, time-lapse photography is an excellent choice if you're going through the Panama Canal. We did some time-lapse right here on my phone, which was super cool. I really loved watching the gates open. I was fascinated with watching them open. And what we did is we experienced the canal in a few different ways. In the morning, I stayed on my balcony because it was super early. My husband was asleep. It was like 5 a.m. I barely even got coffee. I jumped out there with a tripod set up the tripod and stayed out without coffee because I wanted to capture the photos and that is not like me, believe me, I need my coffee. Um, I set up the tripod to get the time lapse and then finally went and got my coffee because things were moving slow and then came back and enjoyed that entire first morning passage on the balcony. And then in the afternoon, my mom and I headed up above the bridge, deck 15, the, the viewing area that's fully exposed. We stayed up there and watched the passage back through the locks um, which was spectacular. Uh, you know, you can, you can see it from both sides, essentially, when you're on the top of the ship. You can watch going into the locks, and then when you get through the last lock, what you want to do is run to the back of the ship and look out the back, and you can see all three locks behind you. It's absolutely spectacular, you guys. If I could have spent the whole entire cruise at Princess Keys and in the locks, we probably would have done that. I would have spent 10 days in those two places, and it would have been completely fulfilling and wonderful. So that's a little summary of the locks experience. Okay, so Cal Seth, I love the shipping containers too. Um, when we went to um, Cristobal, we were docked next to a fully operational shipping um, port. It was taking the containers off of a um, off of a Maersk ship that was, um, you know, either coming or going. It's hard to say. And so they had the Dole, the Dole um, pineapple and banana containers and everything and it is it's spectacular my husband called them my husband my son called them what do you call them honey camels with what on them camels Pyramid. camels with pyramids on them he loved them we just literally sat out there in our robes and just stared at them moving and shipping and moving the containers from ship to dock and it is just a beautifully choreographed thing so yeah definitely okay what other questions do we have coming in about the um the uh, cruise i'm ready Nurse Nancy says, did the ship have to go through locks to get in? To get in? Mm -hmm. To the canal? Okay. Nurse Nancy, I don't quite understand the question, but I think I know what you mean. So to get to start your um, to start your passage into the canal, you go through that first set of locks, which is kind of at the the opening of the Atlantic into the canal you do, you go through them. And then Gatun Lake, you're sort of um, let me see if I can find something here that shows a photo. Gatun Lake is sort of just a man-made lake. It's quite beautiful though. And you essentially just sit in the lake and wait until you pass back through. You pass the opposite direction, these same locks. So there are not two sets of locks where you would come through on one side and then go back on the other. They're actually just um, one set. I'm trying to find some pictures of the lake here and I think I can probably find something for you. But watch my social media accounts because we are definitely going to post quite a bit there. Okay, here's a port guide for the Panama Canal. I'm going to see if I can find something that shows. No, it doesn't really show the locks. You can see kind of a high level overview right here of the of the lock system. And um, over here is the Pacific side of the locks, which we didn't make it anywhere near. And over here is the Caribbean or Atlantic side. So we went through the locks over here on this side and then sat in this lake and waited, if that makes sense. Now, if you're on a full transit, what you do is you continue through Gamboa, the Culebra Cut, and you go through Pedro Miguel locks. And um, I know there's another set of locks here. I can't remember where they are, but I want to say, 
Oh geez, I don't actually know. Maybe it is just the Pedro Miguel locks and the Gatun locks, but I would really like to go back and do a full transit. So let's get to some more questions here. Whomever asked if, how my mom enjoyed the cruise, she enjoyed it so much. It was very interesting. I think she's here, by the way. She's trying, to, I know she's planning to come and log in with us today. But the funny thing about this cruise is that we all felt really good. As soon as we got on the ship, we all had this really high amount of energy. And we were walking an average of maybe, if I had to guess, I'd say four to eight miles a day, even my mom. And she was a trooper. She did great. She felt good the whole time. She had high energy level. Just, we all just felt good. My husband was a little bit sick um, in the beginning. He's kind of getting over a cold. And now he's got something that's probably just like a manifestation of what he had before. But he did great too. Nothing really slowed him down. He was fine. Um, it was pretty amazing. All right, Shannon Steele said, wondering what you did in Costa Rica, Cartagena, and Grand Cayman. We're heading to those ports in March. Yes. You know what? Um, I do want to cover. I do want to cover that, Shannon. So why don't we go ahead and just jump into what we did in each port right now? So in Costa Rica, we did a private tour with a company called Your Lucky Tour. I highly recommend it. We created a tour with the owner Eduardo, where we kind of customized it, and you can do the same thing. It was 102 or 103 dollars per person. We had our own driver who had a really nice truck, like an SUV. So it wasn't a taxi cab, but it also wasn't a bus. We went to, we wanted to go to Cahuita National Park because it was our goal to go to the coast. Um, we wanted to see the coast and Cahuita was amazing. We hiked along the beach and the jungle, which are right next to each other. And in the jungle, we saw um, pit vipers, which are poisonous little teeny tiny yellow snakes. We saw termites, crabs, um, white face monkeys. We saw sloths that day, a massive amount of sloths. They took us to someone's private farm and let my son pet a sloth. It was unbelievable. It was a really beautiful private tour and I highly recommend your lucky tour. They're sweethearts. And our driver, Ruperto, was a class act, a really great guy, literally informed us and talked to us the entire time. That tour also went to a fruit stand, which was way more fun than I expected. Um, you got to have coconut, oranges, fresh bananas, taste the difference between local bananas that are grown at their, you know, they're like on someone's property versus the ones that are grown on the plantations. Fresh squeezed orange juice, star fruit. It was it was so much fun. We loved that part of it. Um, and then we went on a quick canal ride on the Tortuguero canals. And that's where we saw sloths in the trees down by the water. We saw a mom going number two, I'm not kidding you, in the water with a baby, a baby sloth. She was holding a baby sloth. We saw Jesus Christ lizards, they called them. You'll see it all in our vlogs. It was a really fun day. So that's what we did there. Um, Cartagena, uh, not my favorite port. A lot of people will agree with me. I'm seeing some comments here about that. Cartagena, you need more time. Part of the problem with our cruise guys is that we had uh, propulsion issues that were known on this ship since probably the spring. So we knew that our ports were going to be short stops. So we were only in Cartagena from about, I want to say eight to noon, which really doesn't leave you enough time. In hindsight, we would have gone to see the fort instead of the, um, of the tour that we did, we actually did a, um, um, a carriage ride, which is very popular. We did it with the cruise ship. It was a lot of people. There were no restrooms. That was an issue for me. Um, I had had several cups of coffee that day, and I'm sorry, but I had to pee. I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there. I really did, and there was no restroom for a few hours, and it was not it was not my favorite thing. The carriage ride was beautiful. Going through Old Town Cartagena was great, but as people often tell you, the street vendors are very aggressive there, really up in your grill, literally physically like up on you. And the city is kind of dirty and it just wasn't my favorite place. So I don't, I wouldn't say don't do anything in Cartagena. I would actually recommend that you go to the, to the fort. I do actually recommend the carriage tour as well because it is a very good and quick way to see the old city, the walled city, which is spectacular, colorful, and beautiful. But please have realistic expectations about what those tours really are. Um, the buses are fine, but they do not have amenities like restrooms. Um, and it's hard to even find a restroom when you get into the to the city. Like we had, our tour guide basically told us to go find a shop, like go in a jewelry store, and that's what everybody did. It was kind. I, I don't. You guys know I don't like to be negative, but I also really want to be honest with you about things. And that was a bit of a disappointment. So highly recommend the, the fort. Definitely get off the ship and do something there, but not my favorite. Um, as you guys know, we rented a cabana on Princess Keys. If you've been following my Instagram and Facebook page today, I posted the photos of our cabana. That was probably one of the best days. We had so much fun. 
Um, we, we swam right off the beach much of the day. We floated on our rafts. We, we used our goggles to snorkel because as you guys know, we packed really light and we didn't take all our snorkel masks, but you can absolutely snorkel there. Um, we walked the very short distance to the barbecue buffet, which was fine. It was nothing special. It was burgers, you know, um, chicken sandwiches, hot dogs, and some, some nice little side dishes. It was fine. Um, and a short walk from the cabanas, but that was a real highlight. Our last port was Grand Cayman, and that's the one where I feel like I need to tell everybody what happened in Grand Cayman. Um, you'll see it in the vlogs too, but we kind of blew it a little bit in Grand Cayman. Our plan was to go ahead and take a cab down to Calico Jacks, um, which is kind of on the farther end of, um, of Seven Mile Beach. So first thing that happened is when we got off of the ship from the tender, again, we had a very short port day there because of the propulsion issues, 7 a.m. to 3, so our all aboard time was like 2, and we wanted to be all aboard at 1, but we didn't get off the ship until 9.30. So we walked out past all of the vendors who were offering taxi cabs thinking we could get our own cab on the street. You know, everybody thinks, oh, it'll be no problem, I can get a cab. Well, we couldn't find a cab for about 15 minutes and I felt bad because we were walking on a busy street. My poor mom, my poor little son, we're kind of schlepping everybody along and we had a really hard time finding a cab. But once we found one, he had to turn around and go back and pick up some other passengers and he pretty much strong-armed us into going to Royal Palms. Royal Palms is a former hotel turned to a beach club, which has a $2 entrance fee, which sounds great. Oh, it's comfortable, it's shady, it's, you know, it's nice. What they don't tell you is that that $2 entrance fee is just the tip of the iceberg with what's gonna cost. If you want a beach chair, it's $12. If you want an umbrella, it's $15. Now the restaurant and the drinks are great. Beautiful restaurant, beautiful, great drinks. You guys um, will probably see my Bear Garita coming up here in a few social media days. Um, but I do recommend the restaurant, but the beach is very small and it was extremely crowded with five ships in town. So. I will not go back to Royal Palms. I will pursue a beach that is farther down the coast and not let the taxi cab driver tell us what to do. Um, that was the mistake that we made. We had fun. We all swam. My mom got in with a rash guard and played with my son in the water, floated in the ocean. We had a fun time, but we wanted to leave. We were done. We we're like, let's, you know what? This is too much. There's too many people. The, the cost is starting to rack up, you know, a $60 restaurant bill and a $30 bill for the, um, the umbrella and stuff. And we're like, you know what, let's just go. Let's go back to the ship and, and have some lunch and beat the tender line because Grand Cayman has massive tender lines. So that's what we did there. Um, and on the Panama Canal day, we did stay on the ship. So I hope that answers your question, Shannon. I know that was a very long answer. Stephanie Abbott said, is Caribbean Princess your favorite princess ship? Stephanie, not really, no. I wouldn't say so because it's missing the covered pool. My son and I love covered pools, probably because I sunburn so easily. I really enjoy being out of the elements and this ship does not have that, but boy, is it beautifully renovated. And those beds, that restaurant, the buffet, it's just spectacularly done, but it's probably not my favorite. Um, Dawn's family vacations. Dawn, you're going on the Caribbean Princess over Christmas and New Year's, aren't you? I remember you telling me that. Dawn says, do they have a discount price if you book the sanctuary for the whole cruise? There's no option on the website. Oh, I'm not sure, but you know what? We'll check. When we get the patterns uploaded for you, I'll let you know. I'm gonna scan the day one pattern here, Dawn, and see if I can find it. Here's my embarkation day pattern right here. Let's see if they have sanctuary discounts. I don't think that they did because I think it was pretty popular on our voyage and I'm not, I don't think that they were um, selling it that way. So we'll see. I'm not seeing anything on here for that, but I'll take a look for you, okay? All right, more questions coming in. We have Madero vlog mo uh, moments. What was the best part of sailing the Panama Canal? The best part was slowing down to enjoy it. And you know me, I don't like to be, I don't like to sit still and slow down to enjoy anything, but this was an exception. It's, um, it's just sitting on your balcony and wondering, you know, marveling at the engineering. It's thinking about the history of the canal as you pass through the whole area. Not so much necessarily even the canal itself, but the area. You know, you look out at the dense, thick forest and you think about the history of it. You think about the fact that a minimum of 20,000 people died when the French started construction on this canal because they couldn't control yellow fever and they couldn't control the diseases in the area and obviously it was dangerous. There were other things going on as well. But if you read about the history of it, you sort of 
you, you sort of, your senses get involved as soon as you get to that area and, and it really is spectacular. I, I definitely, definitely want to do it again. Another favorite thing about it was being high up, up on that, up above the bridge, standing literally on top of the bridge on deck 15 with the wind blowing in our hair. Me and my mom just hanging out up there for hour, literally hours just watching as we went back through the canals, watching the gates slowly open, watching the water rise at this, just this snail's pace. It is fascinating. And also watching the workers. We would look down on the side of the locks and you'd see the workers, you know, waving at everyone. They take such pride in what they do. And they were talking, carrying on, and they're boisterous. And you could tell they're, they're a really lively, fun group of people that, that work there. And it was just great. Um, also, the photographers, uh, you get to make posters in the Panama Canal. If you go to the photo gallery the day before, you get to make a poster that you can hold over your balcony. And the photographers will take pictures of you and also video. And it will be featured in the video. Um, the ship video, you know how they sell those reflections DVDs for 70 bucks. You can be featured there and they also print out the photos and you can buy those. So that was our favorite. Let's see what we have here. Amanda Graves said, what, what is the price of this cruise? It seems out of reach. Amanda, for us, it wasn't out of reach. Um, for two people, our, we originally booked an inside cabin for under $2,500. Scott Singer, who's on right now, Scott Singer Cruises, is seeing really good deals on the January 10-night Holland America cruises to the Panama Canal. Scott, um, I'm not sure if Scott was looking at... Um, inside cabin prices, but they're under $1,000 per person. It is absolutely not out of reach. You can do this. Now, maybe the 14-day crossings are going to be a little bit more, Amanda, but don't give up hope. We are we cruise on a budget every single time, and our cabins were under $3,000 per cabin, and we got upgraded to an outside cabin, and then we paid to have a $40 per person to upgrade to a balcony. It was a steal, so don't give up. Just be flexible with your dates, wait for deals on these. If they are not booking, the prices will go down. They will, they will. Okay, let's see here. Let's see. Okay, um, Christina wants any um, excursion ideas for Falmouth, Jamaica, guys. Is it walkable? She needs help immediately. Christina, I haven't been there, I'm not sure. Cruising with Wheels said, what type of room did you have this time? I think I think that this question's probably old and you, you already got me here, but it's um, a Carib deck balcony and it was great. Of course, we would love to do a mini suite, but we couldn't quite justify the cost on this one. All right, Amanda Graves said, do any cruise lines leave out of San Pedro to the Panama Canal? Yes, Amanda, they do. The, um, the full transits go from LA to Fort Lauderdale or LA to Miami, and they do leave out of the Port of Los Angeles, correct, so yeah. All right, what other questions do we have coming in here? Um, always be booked. Oh, hey, Tommy. Tommy is saying, guys, that some of the repo cruises that go through are also good. So, like, Norwegian Bliss is repositioning um, Splendor. When it, Tommy, when is Splendor leaving Tampa and coming over here? Do you know? Um, that one might be good, too. Um, G-Man 77 Gas, you did the 15-day and the Club Class Mini Suites. It was great. Yes, I can imagine it would be spectacular. Okay, Gwen Pryor. Gwen, we talked a little bit about whether or not we recommend taking the Panama Canal excursions or staying on the ship um, a little bit earlier. So listen to the replay, but I'm going to give you a short answer on this. In short, it's up to you. It depends on how much you want to see. We opted to stay on the ship because we enjoyed the locks so much that we wanted to see them a second time. So that's probably a good summary of it. All right. You getting me some more questions, my friend? Awesome. Mr. Cruise Tips TV is actually printing off the questions and giving them to me, you guys, because I know that we have um, we have a lot of questions coming in and we really want to try to get to everybody um, on this. Uh, Cruising with Wheels wants to know, is there a big difference between a balcony and a mini suite on Princess? Yeah, they're pretty darn big, guys. Um, Kevin and Frank, the difference is that the mini suites have a separate sitting area in addition to the bed area. So imagine a balcony cabin with an extra added area um, where you um, can sit and watch TV. You also have a, a bathroom with a full bathtub on mini suites and those bathtubs are heaven on earth. I think there's two TVs in all the mini suites too, but they're significantly larger. They're also more expensive. They're a real treat. In our early days before we had our son, when we were just the two of us cruising, we found it more affordable to cruise in mini suites and we would never do anything other than minis, but now it's a little bit harder. Okay, 
Let's see. Barbara Samar wants to know what's a great place to go on Grand Turk. Barbara, from what I've heard, I think you will definitely want to try Jack's Shack. Okay, let's see here. Um, Nurse Nancy wants to know, do we spend a lot more on specialty restaurants? Nurse Nancy, we went to Planks um, on the first night. It was $12 per person, and it was a little too much meat for us, so I, th I don't think we would do it again, but it was really fun. And then we did go to the Crown Grill on our second to the last night with my mom and my son, and we really enjoyed the Crown Grill. It was great. Um, cruise TV channel, no. I don't know of any cruises leaving from San Francisco to the Panama Canal, but that is an excellent question. Julianne wants to know what's the best time for deals on Carnival. Pretty much any time, Julianne. They're pretty price controlled at Carnival. You're not going to see huge dips. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to read some of the questions that are a little bit older. Guys, hang in there. Uh, Mr. Cruise Tips TV will continue to compile the questions as we go. Okay, um, Alice wants to know if we have any suggestions for finding a good travel agent. Alice, we have a travel agent on the live chat today. Um, Don from Don's Family Vacations is probably what you would call an Alaska expert. I'm sure he would be happy to help you. You should probably message him on his channel. I also can give you several other recommendations if you email me um, at sherry at cruisetipstv.com. Um, let's see here. Yes, Scott wants to know. Scott Singer Cruises says that's a crazy short port time. Do you remember how long your original port stop was supposed to be? Scott, yeah, I think it was a full day. I think it was probably like an 8 to 5 or an 8 to 6. It was a bummer. Um, Amanda wants to know how much was it to rent a cabana? It's $200, Amanda. That does not include a meal. It does, however, include um, a little, sh little kind of like a trolley ride, like a large golf cart ride to the cabana, which you don't need. You could totally walk, but we didn't know that. <laughs> so we took the, the trolley there and then we walked back. It also includes two floats. They are air conditioned cabins. They do have loungers on the patio and on the sand in front of the cabana and they are heaven on earth. Um, Amanda wants to know if we'll ever do the full lot cruise. Oh yeah, you better believe it, Amanda. I am dying to do that now, but it's a matter of time. It's two full weeks and that getting that time off work is hard for me. Um, let's see here. Bonnie said, why don't you do the shore excursions from the ship? I've always had a great time booking their excursions. Bonnie, we do. In fact, we, we did um, in Cartagena. We did the shore excursion through Princess on the carriage rides, and actually it wasn't, it wasn't a very good experience. We're getting a lot more savvy with booking them ourselves and finding that they're better, they're better, but I would not ever consider booking on my own in Cartagena. There's nothing that could convince me to book my own excursion. I wouldn't feel safe. So... Um, we, we, we sometimes do, but they're usually way more expensive. And if we're familiar with the port, we're probably just going to do our own thing. Sandra Erickson said, do you need to have inoculations for the Caribbean? No, generally not. You may not even need the long sleeves and the bug spray, Sandra. It just depends on where you're going. Scott Singer um, said, did you like cruising the canal on such a large ship or would you rather go on a smaller cruise ship? Scott, that's such a good question. I think if I were to do it again, if I were to do the full transit, obviously it would have to be on a smaller ship because you can't get the Neo Panamax size cruise ships, which we were on a Neo Panamax ship, um, through the smaller lock. So we'd probably do Coral or Island Princess or one of the Holland America ships to go through the full transit. So yeah, totally. Good question. All right. All right, let's see. Julianne, the best cruise line for deals. The least expensive cruise lines are generally Norwegian and Carnival, but you can find good prices on all of the major lines as well. Okay, let's see here. <sighs> wow, Amanda, you're going on Splendor in January out of Long Beach to Mexican Riviera. We're trying to decide, Amanda, if we should do that one too. Um, little bit tough. Yeah, night audit. You're starting to rethink the excursions in Cartagena after hearing about the vendors. Yeah, I would. I just still would encourage you to get off the ship. I actually, I should take back what I said a little bit about the booking on your own in Cartagena. I did hear some people booking private, like, city tours in Cartagena with people who um, are very well reputed on TripAdvisor and things like that. But just be careful. It's it's just, it's very much a big city. It's bustling. It's fast paced. There's a lot of poverty. You know, we're used to that as cruisers, Caribbean, Mexico, whatever. We see all that. But there was just a higher level of aggression for, on behalf of those vendors that makes me a little more concerned. Um, Dawn's family vacations, no, I don't think they have new carpet in the staterooms. Good question. I think it was more the main floors. I don't, do you think the carpet was new, honey? In the stateroom? I don't think it was. No, no, I, I'm 90% sure that it was not. But the rooms are in really good condition, Don. They are. They're in great condition. I, there, are, I saw um, reviews 
on cruiseline.com about Caribbean Princess and the rooms being filthy. Maybe some of the rooms are, but ours was immaculate. You know, sometimes the furniture gets dinged up and things like that. I didn't even see any of that. So it was, it was great. Okay, more questions for me, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? Nurse Nancy wants to know how the restaurants were. Okay, Nurse Nancy, I'm so glad that you brought up the restaurants because I had it on my list to talk about dining and I kind of didn't do that yet. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, so I want to share with you kind of what happened with our dining experience. Um, we had booked 6 p.m. early dining, but when we got on the ship, they put us into 5.30 dining, which is way too early for us normally. We tried to get it changed, but we couldn't get anything until 7.30, and that was just a little bit too late. So we kept our table at 5.30. Sorry about that, a little thirsty. Um, the main dining room food was good but I've had better on Princess. We all sort of agreed that in the first few days, the food was a little bit too salty. And then the entrees were generally on point, but not consistently excellent. Would it deter me? Absolutely not. The buffet food was pretty good. Breakfast was a nine out of 10 every day. The omelet bar, the variety of egg dishes, the fruit, the fact that they serve salad at breakfast, which I'm, I know it's really weird, but I require lettuce in my life. I know that's weird, um, but they just had really good selection um, for breakfast. The buffet got a little weird around lunch though and dinner. There were way too many things like squid salad or like a really odd dish that I couldn't identify any of the dishes in. And I'm a pretty good adventuresome eater but there were some weird things. On one of the days that I went up to have lunch there in the last few days, um, there was just, there was like hot foods that I couldn't even identify, like some kind of weird beet stew that was like bright purple, but it wasn't like, it just didn't look appetizing. So I don't know. I, I think that they could have done a little bit of a better job with the food. Um, but it was good and we were never, ever disappointed. I never walked away from a meal saying, oh, that was awful or anything like that. I would walk away saying, I wish they had a little bit more recognizable dishes. You know, not necessarily even American cuisine, but like consistently good Asian or Indian food would be nice. For example, the ramen station in the back on the plank side that they did during lunch just wasn't very good. The ramen was kind of chewy. It could, they, could do a, they could do a better job. They could definitely do a better job. Yeah, Tommy, no LaCroix today. So I've got my Pellegrino and my straw. <laughs> It keeps falling down in there, which is not good. But I'm in a bubbly kind of mood today. I'm still like, I've got an empty refrigerator because we just got home. So I need to get some LaCroix chilling. Get back to my normal life, right? All right, Robert Hodge, if you want to take a cruise in March or April, do. I think it's too late to get a good deal. It totally depends on whether or not you're sailing spring break, where you're going. You know, it just depends. But check it out. Susie Junko wants to know, is Grand Cayman wheelchair accessible? Okay, Susie, that's an excellent question. I didn't see any wheelchairs being transferred from ship to tender um, on Grand Cayman. I did see some mobility impaired people really struggling to get from the ship to the tender. It is a very rocky um, tendering operation. So it would not be my first choice of ports for you um, if you are in a wheelchair. I, I think it can be done but it doesn't look fun. I was worried. I was worried about the lady that I saw that needed two or three people to help her get from the ship to the tender. It was, you know, the, the boats were going like, the boat and the dock were going like this and it just didn't look safe to me. So I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Gwen said, do many people have the anytime dining? Yes, Gwen, many people do have the anytime dining. It's quite popular. It's very popular between 5.30 and 7.30. If you show up after 7.30, you will probably be okay. Bonnie, they did have a wonderful salad area at the buffet. We could always count on the salad. Um, they had, at lunch, they had really cool like nuts to put on top of your salad. I know that might sound a little bit odd, but like beautiful pumpkin seeds, walnuts, almonds. But then they took them away at dinner, which my husband and I were kind of disappointed at. One night he was like, we went into the buffet for dinner for one reason or the other, and he wanted to put some nuts on his salad and they were gone. And we're like, oh man, they, they had them at lunch. I wish they did, but yeah, beautiful salad eight or nine different salad dressings you could choose from, lots of beautiful fresh greens, always consistently cucumbers, carrots, zucchini, celery, um, peas, you know, all the standard salad bars. It was really nice. And a variety of different types of lettuces. So they have a giant bowl of iceberg, but then they'd have 
nice mixed greens as well. So that was really great. Okay. Um, <laughs> How early can you check in for embarkation? You want to hit the pool and reserve shows early. You can't reserve shows on this one, but for this particular ship, you could probably walk on at about 11 or 11.30 if there's no delays. So, ah, Seth, Seth is like you, honey. He says, salad is not food. It comes with the food. That is so funny. Yeah, Seth, I know, totally. Okay, um, cruise TV channel. No, there's no ports you should be worried about on the cruise. But like I said, be aware in Cartagena and in Costa Rica too. Limon, Costa Rica was, I felt safer there. Okay, great. All right, I think that um, Amanda has a question about entertainment. Amanda, my mom hit a couple of the shows and she said they were great, but I felt like we had a problem with timing for shows. Here's the deal with the entertainment on Caribbean Princess. They offer three show times. 6.45, 8.15, and like 10.15 or something like that. Okay. The 8.15 show is crammed, packed. Everybody wants to go to the 8.15 show, show because it just seems to work for their dinner times. That just goes to show you how many people eat early on these ships. Really, everybody eats early. So that 8.15 show was standing room only. We couldn't get in. Two of the nights we couldn't get in, but my mom went and stood in the back and said that the shows were great. We saw zero shows on this on this ship. That was a bit of a disappointment, but it happens sometimes. And um, I normally catch a few shows during a cruise, but I don't hit one every night. There were a lot of comedians and musical performances on the ship, and I heard that they were great, but I can't speak to that. Okay. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, hit me with some more questions. Nurse Nancy says, were you ever wishing you had more clothing? Ah, Nurse Nancy, no, I never wish for more clothing. Honest to goodness, I didn't miss a thing. I really didn't. Um, and I'll tell you all about it in next Saturday's live stream. I loved packing light. I cannot believe those words are escaping from my mouth, right? I can't. It was fantastic. We did a lot of laundry, but I don't mind doing laundry. And it was so nice. The cabin wasn't as cluttered. That was another thing about packing light that was great. Scott, you have a question. I want. I like that question. Scott said, did I see a post from yesterday about your disembarkation being extremely delayed? You are good, Scott. Yes. There, you guys, we had a lot of medical evacuations on this trip. A minimum of two. I think there were more. We actually, when we left Fort Lauderdale, we were delayed because someone had to be taken off the ship in an ambulance. On our second to the last night, or our last night in Grand Cayman, we were two hours away from Grand Cayman. We had left and the captain made the announcement that we were turning around because a, a passenger needed to be hospitalized. And from what we understand, they're okay, but that made our arrival into Fort Lauderdale late and we didn't get off the ship until after 11.15 or 11.30. There were people definitely getting off as early as 9.30, but our flight didn't leave till five, so we didn't rush it. All of the shore excursions were canceled that day. We were scheduled to go on an Everglades airboat ride and we couldn't because they canceled everything. So they rebooked us on a, on a, um, on a shuttle to the airport and we just had to deal with it. You guys, um, we are so running out of time. We've got to get to our son's um, piano recital, so we need to wrap up now. But what I'd love for you guys to do is please leave your questions after this saves to replay so that we can get to them because I really feel like we haven't covered everything today. Um, we would love to try to answer them for you, especially if they're pertaining to Caribbean Princess or the Panama Canal. We will be back next Saturday, the 9th at 12 o'clock Pacific time to talk all about our carry-on packing only experience. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, are there one or two other questions that I can squeeze in real quick before we're done here? Yes. I like Dawn's. Is that the one you're going to read me? No. Okay. Okay. Um, we are going to the Panama Canal soon. What tours would you recommend in Panama Canal? In Panama Canal, if I were to do a tour that day, um, what was her name? Diana. Diana, I'm sorry. I would do the railway or I would do the full locks cruise. Yeah. Or the Embarra Indian sounds good too. Um, let's see here. Uh, Brittany said, do I have any regrets from the cruise? Oh, yes. I regret what we did in Grand Cayman with the taxi cab. If you listen, if you didn't hear that story, go back and you'll, you'll hear it again. A um, couple of more little quick ones before we, before we sign off. Uh, Dawn's Family Vacations, did you discover a new secret deck on this ship? Why, yes, Dawn, we did discover a new secret deck. Um, I'll give you a spoiler because it's going to be a long time before the vlogs come out, but it's the forward 
exit on deck 15. It's the top of the bridge. So go to the Lido deck, walk through the cabins on deck 15, and you will be on top of the bridge. It's not always open, but boy, is it cool. So you will really enjoy that when you go to the Panama Canal. It's a good one. Okay, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We will see you next Saturday. If we've missed your question, be sure to leave it in the comments below after this saves to, um, to replay. We are so happy to be back. We had a wonderful cruise. Thank you so much for all of your, your support and honesty. We really appreciated reading all of your Thanksgiving comments as well while we were gone. And until next time, we will see you on the high seas. Bye-bye. Cruise are all the week. <laughs>